Henry Stradiac's Opus 1 is one of the most common tools that us violinists get to use when we're practicing intonation, when we're working on dexterity of the left hand, and in today's video we're going to be working on the two string exercises that are in Henry Stradiac's Opus 1. Stick around to the end of the video. Well, let me ask the first question, why even bother with Stradiac exercises? Well, again, so the Stradiac is supposed to help build dexterity in the left hand. So what does that mean? So if I'm going to bring my violin over here, and I have my hand over here, and my fingers are supposed to go in the exact same place at the exact same time in a repetitive pattern. This also brings up a conversation of pitch memorization. What is pitch memorization? What it is, is when you put a finger down, let's say it's gonna be our B natural, if I play a B natural, and I let go of that B natural, but that first finger should be the same B natural as the previous B natural. That is what pitch memorization is. And that's something that I really encourage all my students to really focus on because you'll become a more in tune player as a result of paying attention to those little details. I personally use Stradiac Opus 1 exercises all the time when I'm warming up for performances, for concerts, and even when I have time in between students, if I don't have time to practice during the day, I usually practice Stradiac to kind of get the fingers going. Let's start with the first line or the first exercise of the two string exercises in Stradiac. So if we're going to play this together. First things first is that you want to make sure you are having a good sound quality out of your violin. You don't want to be pressing or squeezing the bow when you're pressing like too much of a scratchy sound is no good. Also, I encourage all YouTube violinists, especially you watching this video, is to pull the string. That, that's something that I want you to keep in mind when you're producing a good sound with the Stradiac ex exercises, is that we want to be able to pull the string, not press down on it. So if you take a look at how my, how my string is going to the right, you're gonna get a much clearer sound and not so aggressive. So when I play, let's say starting from the D string, that's me pulling the bow. But if I press down, if I press down too much on the right hand, then of course it's not gonna sound ideal. That's step number one. When you're working on these stride exercises, focus on tone quality because depending on how much weight you're putting down on the bow, that, I, that could actually change your intonation over time. So that's a little quick tip that I wanna provide for you. Once you've figured out how much weight you're going to be using for the D string and for the A string, I want you to focus on the left hand. Now there are a couple ways to really focus on the left hand. You can do a more articulation on the left hand as so, and I'm just going to demonstrate that really quickly. You hear that kind of that stomping sound when my finger goes down on the fingerboard. That is what's called articulation. If a teacher ever asks you, I want that more articulated, then that is what that means. You want all the fingers to be present on the fingerboard. Now, that's one way to focus on the Stradiac. Another way to focus with the left hand is to do the exact opposite, is to have a little bit softer approach. So let's try that. Generally speaking, you're going to find a little bit of that articulation, but not as much as the first time. So those are two ways that you can really help, you know, elevate your playing by just understanding what your hand is supposed to do with the left hand. What my hand is supposed to do with the left hand? Yeah, I think that was a little redundant, but you get what I mean. The next thing I want to point out is the string crossing, because this is the first time in the Stradiac Opus 1 dexterity to left hand exercises that you are actually switching strings from one string to the next, especially when you're going from the D to the A string. Now, I'm gonna leave a video up in the cards over here and at the end of this video so that way you can have access to smooth string crossings because by understanding what the smooth string crossings and how we approach the right arm, that's gonna help you with this exercise. So let's take a look. So we're gonna try on the D string again and I want you to take a look at my right arm right over here. If I'm gonna be doing... See what I did there? I not just did my wrists or fingers, I put my entire right arm down. Now, something that I see oftentimes in beginners is that sometimes 
when I say move the forearm down, they do the elbow instead. And then we get a chicken wing. You know, that's something that we don't want. So when I say forearm, move your forearm, that implies that for me, I want the entire right hand. Because when I, for some reason, when I'm in lessons, when I say forearm, that seems to be a better connection with the students in terms of the language that I'm using. If I say move your hand down, then it goes this way with the wrist. If I use a if I say put your elbow down, then it's too much. I think students oftentimes overcorrect themselves. So just a tiny little tiny so just a tiny little tip, I recommend just saying, okay, make sure that the right forearm is adjusting to the string crossing. So, but but again, if you want something more in detail, check. Um, stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm going to provide a link for you. So let's try that one more time. We'll start on the D string, smooth string crossing, and then next, and then we can try going on to the next exercise. Now notice how the string crossings are not like two separate levels. I'm kind of blending in the levels of what I'm doing with the right hand, like especially on the up of right there. I'm not doing, I'm not doing something too aggressively. I'm doing, and that is one way for you to have those smooth string crossings. Now, if you're interested in learning more about string crossings, check out the video right over here. I'm also going to leave a link and a video right over here for you to check out sound production because sound production is absolutely key here for you to get a good tone from your instrument while doing these shredded exercises.